Zach in Richmond, how are you? I am great. Good to hear from you, Matt. Um, I'm a big fan of you and been uh, watching um, all your stuff for years. Cool. I'll probably get this wrong, but go ahead. Hey, so, uh, man, I don't know how to start this. Um, Mark Twain said, truth is stranger than fiction. Maybe. And uh, in the past about year, uh, ran into a lot of deep history information, and it's just uh, mind-boggling, so I thought I'd just throw some uh, words out there to kind of get your mind thinking. Um, So before the historical Babylonians, uh, they were around 7,757 B.C. Um, Apparently, I ran into a small group of online deep history researchers and stuff, and they say, you know, history goes way before the Hebrews, before the Babylonians, and we have evidence of it in the um, Art Art Nova font and the uh, Desdemona font of Shakespeare. And... um, uh, so, so I'm too. completely um, lost because the call screener thing said you wanted to know what my definition of ontology was, and now we're talking about fonts that Shakespeare used and how that shows there was history. That's old. I don't know how that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so to press, it's it's really hard to press it because it's sort of a gestalt understanding. You kind of have to get beyond. I don't know how anything uh, tied to Shakespeare could demonstrate that there was history before the Babylonians. I mean, there's something about that entire thought process that just doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. I can give you, I can give you a straight answer. Um, it's like, it's like saying that a song Elvis wrote proves that Julius Caesar, Caesar liked pickles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm not, I'll connect the dot right now. Okay. So, um, there's the idea that um, letters are um, like an exoteric for the main group of people who use them and then there's an inner esoteric knowledge of what they're actually for uh, to a small clique of people down through history Um, and Shakespeare is the idea of Jacques Pierre Um, the idea of uh, it's sort of like uh, where we get the idea of I am from uh, or my name is from um, uh, I forget his name um Appel, Jim Appel, you know the word Jim Appel? It's French. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we kind of get the idea I am from, the name my my name is I am. Anyways, to connect the dots. I'm pretty uh, sure the concept of existence and self I- existed long before French. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, that's the inner... Then, then clearly the French theory. can't be where we got yeah. the concept from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an inner esoteric for the group who know where these ideas come from. And then I'm not interested in, in yeah. secret knowledge about languages and stuff like that. Uh, okay, I, I can is, go beyond that. Uh, well, I don't know. So beyond it, which direction? What, what is the point that we're trying to get to? <laughs> well, on, I had a question on ontology because um, I'm trying to personally look deeper into history. I, think uh, that's ontolo- actually worth- I don't. I don't know how it, that doesn't relate to history. So uh, ontology I mean, is about to- ontology okay, is about what something is made of. What is its essence? Right. It's about so you know the ontology of of my glasses or whatever. This is. I I don't know how this relates to history. In this, I don't, I'm not even sure what you're asking. So try one more time. Well, I, was, time. I was able to go further, deeper into history re- research-wise by connecting truth to ontology. If that makes any sense, I can go deeper. Um, ontology, to me, was the preeminence for truth. The more ontological understanding you have of the world, the more um, uh, transparent. Um, truth becomes okay so my knee-jerk reaction was just to call bullshit on that but i would have been wrong uh because so when we're we're talking about what is truth i have a a a conformist view of, of truth which is that Truth is that which is consistent with reality and so if you understood the nature of reality better you would have a more true understanding of reality but that has nothing to do with what the meaning of ontology that's um okay I guess it was a word for the lack of a word I could think of. 
because I, I studied mostly philosophy, then I just happened to run into this uh, history of Babylonia, Carthaginians, Semites, and then before that, I found actual evidence of, um, to my to my best knowledge, of uh, ancient ancient peoples who were actually not that dumb as we think, as we're like predictively programmed to think. That the, the, the further back in time you go, well, the well dumb dumb's kind of a, a. I mean, it's first of all, it's a crappy word to just use in general because it's not really saying anything. Uh, the ancient the ancient people had. Uh, they, an understanding of things, our understanding is better, more accurate. If if the claim is that ancient people had a more accurate understanding, then you'd need to actually find a way to demonstrate that. Uh, well, I do. Um, okay, cool. The Indian, the Indian history. If you go into India, um, they talk about um, de- uh, deluges. You know, deluges, and they talk about fires in the sky. Yeah, um, fires, fires, and and floods we know about, and we know more than ancient people did. Okay, um, let me try and put it in another way. Um, they talk about um, man as being the kind of infinite clay. To but but man uh, isn't infinite mind. or clay, so clearly they weren't right. Right, they're not. I, I know they're not right. They're okay, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find this example of ancient peoples having a great understanding for something that we don't. Well, the, I'm trying to tell you, and you, and uh, okay. mostly what I'm trying to tell you is allegory for something, an uh, inner truth that they understand. Allegory they isn't tell. truth. No, no, Metaphor truth is not is behind truth. The allegory. The truth is behind the allegory. So okay, then throw the allegory out so we can see the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that um, there were ancient people, I think, based off my research, that weren't necessarily smarter than you and I. What I'm saying was is that there may have been a group of people, based on my research, that were idiot savant. That um, if that if you've heard of the idiot, I, idiot sure. savant, sure. Uh, well, I, w- yeah. I I just use the word savant. They exist now. It's entirely plausible that they've existed in various uh, extents throughout our history. But when we're talking about, I'm not, even, I'm not even sure what we're talking about other than you were going to show that ancient people had some knowledge and wisdom that we no longer possess or we've lost or what? Well, the Indians kind of hint that what happens is, is you have, it, it rises and falls. It, it isn't like a one great intelligence. What rises and falls? Uh, what happens, civilizations, ideas, um, it's not necessarily this linear thing. Um, it, their ideas, they rise, um, they create civilization, they have great. And the other thing I was going to tell you was um, the idea of certain particular thing. I did an interview with Alan Watt, and he, uh, a deep researcher into uh, ancient history, and he was telling me about, um, <clears throat> I have the video on YouTube, too, if you want to watch it. It's Alan Watt talks with Zach with three Zs. And uh, he goes into the um, basically the where they used to live too in uh, Ethiopia. He calls it, it used to be called Abyssinia, and the idea of Abyssinia is A B C. You have um, that's the kind of inner esoteric of uh, the idea of Abyssinia was because you had A B and C, which is um, I'm gonna. Is, it reminds uh, me of what I I remember in Tanakh class in high school we learned about how all the letters of the Hebrew alphabet have a numerical meaning and then if you look at this word and you add up the numbers in this word and compare it to another word and it sounds like you know you're looking for a, a deeper meaning that's not there or a, a, well, I have, I've, you can connect certain things but there's like I said there's a, a theory called just gestalt theory well see, where you can actually, here, uh, here's the thing where I'm just going to call I don't know what your point. To, no, Zach, stop, stop. No, okay, go ahead. What year did you interview Alan Watts? Uh, this year, because like he died in 1973. No, no, no. It's Alan Watt with one. Oh, no S. Yeah, no S. Okay, that would have been impressive. He's a, he's I, I was <laughs> like, wow. I'm, I'm sitting here. Yeah. I, I thought you said Alan Watts, and I was like, I'm pretty sure no, Alan Watts no. has been dead for a long time. Uh, this is a Scottish Canadian um, deep history researcher from Britain. Well, and the he, thing is, when when people start, so like 
when Shelley was talking about the Tanakh, and when, then we talk about Bible codes. Yes, uh, in Hebrew, uh, each individual letter is, is also a word, and there's a number of different you know meanings and everything else, and you can play those games with it. But to say that Abyssinia is somehow tied to ABC when we're talking about, we're not, I mean, is this is this the origin of a particular alphabet? Is it linguistic? And at the end of the day, what the hell did we learn from that, even if it were true, that I don't even understand what the connection is? You can make connections oh, between... The ABC, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt both of y'all. Um, the ABC meant atomic biological chemical. Meant, so meant that to who? The, to the, the ancient... I'm not telling you a truth. I'm just giving you an idea of what I've read. I'm not okay, telling I, you this is absolute... I, I don't care if it's absolute. I care whether or not there's any reason to care about it. Where, where, who did this mean this to? Sorry? Uh, okay, so the A was for atomic. To who? Mm -hmm. People who didn't understand atoms? Well, when you... Uh, do you mind if I talk about Plato, or do you want me to... I, I don't know how to answer your question. I couldn't go into what kind of... I, I don't know where we're going or what the purpose is. Okay, Alan, what? The purpose is just an inner esoteric and an exoteric for most of the masses to kind of um, to use knowledge. But the inner esoteric, they understand where the knowledge kind of is a derivative of history as you have um, ancient peoples coming down through history that uh, hold, like, knowledge. And they... Um, over time, and it's not necessarily a linear gr um, growth or decay. It's sort of a random process of information. Um, and I mean, basically, Alan Watt gets. Yeah, have you found the video too? I, I, I looked it up. It says he's a conspiracy theorist who runs the online ministry, cutting through the matrix, where he preaches new world order yeah. conspiracy theories. Yeah, this is all making yeah. a lot of sense. I, I'm now now that we the know world what we're is talking. On the, Brink of collapse, governments are using the conflict in the Middle East to distract us from real problem of chemtrails. Yeah, I want to preface too by saying he is not necessarily telling everything. He, he does still keep a wall of silence on certain particular... Oh, oh bullshit. I think if he's been publicly labeled a conspiracy theorist, to then double down and say that he's, there's also things that he's not telling us. <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist and I'm not interested in this esoteric stuff. Sorry. Climate change is a hoax and being used as an excuse to bring about some agenda. Not even... Ooh, some agenda. <laughs> I, I hope it's being used to bring about the agenda of changing what we do that affects the planet. That would be a good agenda uh, to potentially address, but 